Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie. I'm a knitter in Southern California and this is episode 19 of my 2024 podcast series. Did you come to join for the podcast? He's ridiculous. Okay, we'll leave him in focus. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am excited to be back today. Today is June 2nd, 2024. We are officially like getting into summer here. I am feeling the summer vibes. While it's cloudy out right now, uh, the clouds will definitely part at some point today and we're expected to, oh we're only expected to get up to 75 today, but it's been in the 80s the last few days. Um, I've been swimming a couple times this week, last week Memorial Day weekend at a family member's house and then this week we went to do some laps on Friday, so that was fun. It feels like, you know, pool season is here, which I love. I love going to the pool. Um, and we're definitely like in the swing of spring still and some summer knitting. So I guess at some point I'm gonna have to do like a summer knitting plans video for all of my tanks. Um, but for today's podcast episode. I have an update for you on my poppy tea, my sweet shop blanket, a new cast on, and I'm swatching for a new design that I would like to talk to you about. And I have a little bit of tailor talk for the end of the episode. So why don't we get into it and start with my poppy tea. <music> Okay, so the poppy tea is a tea pattern by Petite Knit, and the yarn that I'm using for this is the Kelvorn Woolens Mojave, which is a 60% cotton, 40% linen yarn. It's 185 yards, 170 meters per 50 grams. And I'm using this gorgeous mauve colorway, a beautiful like dusty purple. And I have made some really good progress on this. Earlier this week uh, on Thursday, I did try this on. So let me show you where I'm at first before I get into that. Do, 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 do. Okay, it doesn't look like that much. Here's my progress keeper that I put on from last week. So you can see, I mean, there's definitely a couple inches, maybe two inches of progress there. But this is a sport weight yarn, so it's definitely going a little bit slower compared to like my Farnham tee. That, I feel like a week into it, I had like the front panel basically done. Um, and we're not there yet. I still have um like 25 more rounds before I'm like done with the the yoke of this although I am you know partially knitting up the sleeves here as well so there's a little bit of like multitasking I guess going on here with this um last week when I talked about this I was like really interested in the construction because it's something a little bit different where you know you knit a little bit of the back panel up to here so see this like diagonal line you only knit up to here then you pick up for the front panels on both sides and then you're like knitting in the round but you pick up on the side of the front panel here to start the sleeve knitting and I had been trying to look up if this construction was called anything specifically I had a few comments and people reach out to me and I think I have I think we maybe have determined that this is called either, sorry I wrote it down, I'm trying to find the page, either a full fashioned shoulder or a European shoulder. I've been trying to do some Google searches and like watch some YouTube videos and like both of them kind of seem similar. A lot of information that comes up comes up related to like men's suit tailoring 
which is not quite what I'm looking for. I guess it's similar, but anyways, it doesn't really matter. I was interested. I got a lot of DMs that there's a couple other petite knit patterns that use the similar shaping, specifically the Elizabeth blouse. And I think there's a cardigan also that uses the same shaping. Either way, I think it's really interesting. I was worried about how it was going to fit, but I'll put the video up. I did try this on earlier this week, and it fit like almost perfectly. So I'm really excited about this. Um, so I finished the first section of the yoke. The next section of the yoke is to basically do raglan increases along the four points that I have here. So I have started that, and like I said, I've got about 25 more rounds until I finish that section, and then I think I'm at the point to split for sleeves, although like sleeves are kind of already there so I haven't read ahead fully in the pattern yet to see where we're going um, but yeah I'm really happy with this so far this is kind of my I don't know all of my projects right now are kind of at this point where they're in the round or they're like relatively easy knitting which is great I feel like I haven't had that in a while and I do feel like I can pick this up um, especially for like meeting knitting and just knit knit knit. I just have to like double check with my row counter to make sure every time I get to one of my stitch marker sets like oh am I on an increase a raglan increase round or is this just like a straight knit round <laughs> because I always forget from like one point to the other side here um, but that's why I have a system and why I use row counters so yeah, this is going really well. I guess just a couple little stats in case you're interested. I'm knitting the size extra large, which is the fifth fifth size in the pattern. It's meant to fit a 39 and a half inch to 43 and a quarter inch bust with two inches of positive ease. So a final circumference of 45 and a quarter inches. Um, the pattern recommends using 3.5 millimeter needles. I am knitting on a 4 millimeter needle and the pattern gauge is 23 stitches by 32 rows. I have not measured my gauge yet. <laughs> I should really do that. Um, but like I said, I had tried it on, so I know that it is fitting, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, petite knit patterns in general, I always go up at least one needle size. I guess in the, I don't, yeah, 3.5 to 4 millimeter needle, so half a millimeter needle size, but I think in U.S. sizing that's a full needle size. What is that, U.S. 5 to 6 maybe? I don't know. Yeah, this is a 6. U.S. 6. So... It's going really well, and I'm really happy with it. So, that is where we are at. Okay, let's talk next about my sweet shop blanket. Okay, the sweet shop blanket is a pattern by Laura Penrose, and guys, I have finished the pink section of my blanket. A little bit of a recap, I know if you've been here you've probably heard this many times, but I am knitting this with two advent calendars from 2023. The variegated yarns are hedgehog fibers, the more solid tonal yarns are from botanical yarns. Um, when I started opening my advents last year I was like, oh, if this, you know, if one of them is going to be variegated and one of them is going to be like more tonal, I feel like this will work really well in a sweet shop blanket and it just exploded from there. Um, and the botanical yarn advent calendar kind of went in like um, color order, so yellow, green, blue, purple, pink. And so I have been setting up my blanket from corner to corner yellow, green, blue, purple, pink as like the first half on a diagonal of the blanket and then finishing kind of in the opposite order uh, with pink, purple, blue, green, yellow. So from corner one it's yellow, across the main diagonal is pink, and then it'll come back to the yellow. Uh, it'll probably make more sense if I <laughs> put a photo up, but 
I am officially done with all of the pink section that I'm calling it now and that's really exciting. I would love to scoot back and show you but Buddy has decided to lay down right behind my chair. Bud, watch out. Watch out, bud. I don't want to hit you. Okay. I don't know if this is far enough, but... Do, 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 do. Okay, there it is. There it is. I'll have to get a full, full photo of it laying on the bed and I'll put it up here so you can see it. So, this is exciting. This is like a milestone. Um, and now I can move on to the next section, which I am deeming the purple section of the blanket. And so I'm going to pick out, I've got all my mini skeins in like a plastic bag. So I'm going to pick out all my purple tonals and then the variegated colors that I would like to pair with them, figure out the placement and go from there. I've been kind of consistently doing about two squares every week, um, which has been good. Um, it just kind of means it's going kind of slow and, you know, I would like it to go faster, but I'm mostly a garment knitter, okay? So the garments are really what take my attention, so. All right, that's the update on the Sweet Shop Blanket. Yeah, it's moving along, so. Okay, the dogs have left. The dogs have left the building. Okay. Um, I cast on a new project this week, so let's talk about the sailor beanie. <laughs> I had to go into the office on Wednesday and when I got home I just had this like really really strong desire to cast on a new hat project. It's been on my mind for a while and I was in a place with my uh, not I don't know. I was in a place with my poppy tee where I wanted to try it on before I continued. So I couldn't knit on that. I really wasn't in the mood to like pick up stitches and start a new square on my sweet shop blanket and I don't really have a lot of other stuff going on at the moment so I was like let me cast on a new hat and what I was really craving was just that like in the round kind of mindless knitting on 16 inch circular needles. Well what I decided to cast on was the Sailor Beanie by Sari Nordland. And let me tell you first, this is a top-down hat construction, which means you start with the circular, what's it called? Yeah, you start with the circular cast-on, which is kind of like the pinwheel cast-on. If you've ever done the Musselberg, Musselboro hat, it's that like really tiny circle cast-on, and then you do your increases out. And like... Mm, I wasn't in the mood to do the increases, <laughs> so this like wasn't the best project for me to cast on for what I was craving at the moment, but the next day I was refreshed. I had some meetings and I had basically figured out the increase pattern by then and I made a lot of really good progress on that and now I am at the point where it's basically just mindless in the round knitting, which is what I wanted. So I'm really happy with it. The reason I chose the Sailor Beanie is because of this specific photo um, where Sari Nordland used for one of her samples the Hedgehog Fibers Tweety yarn in the color Lullaby. This very specific yarn. It's a DK weight, 50% um, Falkland Merino wool. 37.5% recycled wool and 12.5% hedgehog fibers thread waste. Um, hedgehog fibers 
We visited uh, in October on the Irish Knitting Tour. They are located in Cork, Ireland. And honestly, that was like one of my favorite things that we did on the trip. I was like so excited to visit Hedgehog Fibers. And this was like one of the things I knew absolutely I wanted to get was two skeins to knit this beanie. It was like... It was like a fight to get this yarn in there, okay? Everybody wanted like a sweater quantity of this purple yarn and I was like, guys, I need two skeins, please. Um, so when we got there in the morning, I like snatched up two skeins right away and I was like, I'm sorry, I need these two. There was plenty more. There was plenty more, okay? It wasn't a huge issue, <laughs> but it was so funny. Anyways, yeah, I loved the, the sample photo so much that I needed the, that exact hat. And so now I'm finally casting on with my Hedgehog Fibers Tweety yarn. Um, this yarn is like super fun and special with the thread waist. I'll give you more of a look here. You can see all the multicolored threads in here. So one of the really cool things that Hedgehog Fibers does is you can send them your yarn scraps. And if you send them, you know, specific weight amounts, um, they will give you discount codes to, for like a one-time shopping, a one-time use discount code so you can shop with them. So when we went to Ireland, a few of us had um, bags basically, like bags of yarn scraps that we turned in for discount codes so that we could shop. <laughs> um, Rachel and I both had 30% off discount codes and which to be fair, okay, Rachel donated, she had, Rachel had a lot of scraps so she donated part of her scraps to me so that I had a 30% discount code and then she also had a 30% discount code and we basically just like went ham in hedgehog fibers and bought a lot of yarn. <laughs> so I'm finally, well I've actually used some of my hedgehog fibers before for my um, Oslo hats for Christmas gifts last year. So now I'm using um, these two other skeins and I definitely have a few more skeins in there as well. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Tangent. Come back. They take that thread, they take that yarn that people turn in to them and they, you know, chop it up. I'm assuming they have one of those things where you can, like, dump the yarn in and it's got these, like, Mm, like razors or whatever blades and then it just like chops up the yarn this is what I imagine into these like little tiny threads and then they spin that into this um, Tweety yarn you can see some like if you see this like orangey one some of them are longer and some of them are more just like almost Tweety neps like this so no two skeins are alike, which is really cool. The base colors are the same, but the tweedy bits are not the same. And they've got some really fun colors. So I love this lullaby one. There's another purple one I was looking at on their website that is more, um, it's a little bit lighter and like bluer. I want to try that one next. Anyways, so... Yeah, I cast on the Sailor Beanie. It is one strand of the Hedgehog Fibers held with one strand of mohair. So the mohair that I'm using is Fuzzy Peach Fibers, um, the colorway Wildberry. So that's this. And this is where I'm at so far with my hat. It looks a little silly, I'm not gonna lie. But that's how it's supposed to look. So just imagine it <laughs> looking better than this. Um, but yeah, let me show you. So here's the cast on you can see. And there was, I, I Google, well, I YouTube searched circular cast on using knitting needles, not using a crochet hook. And I found a really good video. It made it super easy. Um, I will link that video in the description box down below if you're interested in 
seeing what that is, I'll put it under, I always have the notes of all the projects that I talk about in the description box, so I will put it under the Sailor Beanie information. Um, and then you can see the increases here, this way, and it's two by two ribbing, um, apart from that. And, you know, I've basically stopped with the increases here, and now I'm just knitting 2x2 two two knitting in the round. It is a double folded brim, so you'll end up with four layers, I think. This is going to be an extremely warm hat, okay? I'm not really expecting to wear this hat here in Southern California. I'm expecting it to wear it in Ireland again in October. And, like, you know, whenever I go on trips to the snow or something like that. Um, but it's a really fun knit. I'm really enjoying it. And this was my little joke. <laughs> it looks really funny like that. Um, but, yeah. So I've got, I've got a lot more to go. Where am I at? I've got, like... 35 more rows until I get to like the fold point and then you're supposed to do at least one round of just straight knitting I might do a couple to help the fold fold um, and then we'll keep going from there so yeah just an in the round small circular project to keep me going and I'm really enjoying it so that's my sailor beanie Okay, let's talk about my next project, which is actually going to be a tank top design that I'm working on. I had another really fun mail day this week. I got some really exciting things in the mail. And one of the things that I got was two skeins of Dusty Yarn Co. This is the colorway top shelf from her brand new Palm Springs collection that is going to be released soon. She is still working her way through all the colorway reveals. Um, it is all Palm Springs themed. This color called Top Shelf is supposed to be kind of like, you know, agave color themed. And I think like she knit she knit she hit the nail on the head with this I am obsessed with this color and I got it on this really cool base which is her Lux silk cash merino base so it's 70% superwash merino 10% cashmere 20% silk a three ply 437 yards per 100 grams and I swatched it need to actually take this off of the blocking boards because it is dry now. Um, yes, I pin out my swatches, but I don't like pull them super tight. I just pin it out so that they don't roll. Um, I don't particularly like doing the, the like, um garter stitch edges on my swatches. I don't know, I'm just like not very good at that. So I just pin them out so that they don't roll. But here's my little swatch. No, it's hard to see. Um, there we go. You can kind of see that. It's super drapey, you can see that, which is really nice. That's the silk content in there. And this is really soft and really like thin, and the cashmere you can feel is like a little bit fuzzy, especially on the knit side, um, which I really like. So yeah, my goal is to design a tank top similar to, you know those old navy tank tops that are just like, I don't know, like classic, simple. They kind of come in a little bit around the neck. They've got the thick like one inch band, neck band and sleeve band. Um, that's my thought here with this. So yeah, I needed to swatch it out. I have um, done a little bit of the measurements um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think 
it'll be a design that's like released anytime soon. I hope I'm hoping to, you know, get it knit up in the next couple of months, wear it for a bit, see how it goes, and then if I really like it and can figure out the grading for it, this would probably be something that I release like at the beginning of spring summer next year. Um speaking of designs, I do have a couple of design, well, I have one design idea um, that I'm collaborating with for yarn support and potential kits, like a sweater design that is likely going to be coming out in August or September. So keep your eyes peeled on that. I have not started knitting it yet, but I do think I have the pattern mostly worked out, which is really exciting. Um, I've been... <sighs> I've been working my way through the Sister Mountain Design School course um, and all of the spreadsheets and templates that she has available have been super helpful and just like this week especially my mind has just been so like... <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a spreadsheet person, so I get in these like zones where like all I can think about is the spreadsheet and like how to make the math work for different things that I want to do. And so I'm in a really fun like creative math plus knitting space right now, which I'm really enjoying. So um, I don't know. It feels I guess just like a little bit of like chat about it. It feels kind of weird and like imposter syndrome-y to like trying to be breaking into the designer space after being, you know, a knitter for the last four years, kind of being like a content creator, influencer-ish, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I feel like I, I do relatively well on Instagram and here on YouTube. Um, but this has something that I've been this has been something that I've been interested in really since I started knitting um, and with the like math backgrounds that I do have, um, I do think, you know, obviously it's something that I'm interested in. I like doing the spreadsheet piece of it, so I do think it is something that I could be good at. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at with it. Um, and I'm having a, I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun this week. So, yes, this is a fingering weight also. So, like, fingering weight tank tops, I know there is some sort of market for that. Like, you know, the mini mock neck tank is out there, which I think I'm going to be restarting this month as well. Um, but yeah, and then just kind of while we're here talking about the design space. I know I had talked last week about the Santa Scarn Tin Line, and so my order of this came in. Look, look how nicely this matches my nails. I am really happy with it. <laughs> um, this is the colorway Ice Blue or Icy Blue. These are Olive and June Blue Chrome from their summer collection. Link in the description if you're interested. Press on nails. Um, but yeah, this is the fingering weight Santa's Garn Line that I had basically the same yarn that I knit my Farnham tee in, but the fingering weight version instead of the worsted weight version. So at some point this summer, I'm also thinking about knitting up another design in this, um, another tank top, like a v-neck tank top in this. Um, and then... There will be kind of like two parts to that, like the design piece, but then also just seeing how the tin line works up and wears compared to the worsted weight line and doing that comparison. So I got five balls of this and I like it. It looks, I'm, I'm really in love with the color and like it feels really good and you can definitely tell that it's like a fingering weight versus... The worsted weight, I think this would be really awesome to hold double as well for more of a DK weight if you didn't want the like regular worsted weight version. Um, although that is more yarn, but like, I don't know, I think you could make a really nice fabric. You could even like marl some colors together. This yarn is already interesting enough because that linen almost gives it like a heathered look. The linen, the way that it takes the dye, is not quite as saturated as um, the cotton. And I don't know, it's like kind of hard to like really see it 
on the camera. I wonder if like, if, you know, it might be easier to see it in person. Um, but like if you had a cup, you know, two colors that you really liked, you could like marl them together if you were holding them together to make something DK weight. So maybe there's another design idea in the future for something um, with that yarn held double for more of a DK weight. But let's see, I think that's it. I think that is like really the update on all of my projects. So my goals for this week are to cast on this um, top shelf tank top. Um, actually, I think, I don't know. Do I want to like say what the name is? I think I might call it something like the Palm Springs tank top. Um, even though I kind of like top shelf tank or like agave tank, I kind of would like my designs to be more of like a California themed names. Um, and I would like to make progress. I would like to finish the yoke on my poppy tea. I would like to plan out and start the purple squares for my sweet shop blanket and then we'll just make progress whatever we make on the sailor beanie i'm not going to put goals on that that's just going to be kind of like my ongoing hat project to get me through meetings and stuff oh also are you proud of me that i didn't cast on another oslo hat I posted that on Instagram and there were a couple people that were like, oh my god, I'm so proud of you. This is so unexpected. And I was like, I know. Crazy, right? Um, yeah, I've been wanting to try out some different hats. So I haven't seen a lot of people knit this one, um, but it's really nice. I'm liking it so far. Uh, one that I have seen a bunch of people make is the Manhattan hat. It's a one by one rib by Tori Yu. I do that one's on my list. I do really want to knit that one. Um, but the the purple hedgehog fibers was really calling to me. So that's where we're at. All right. Um, let me give you my little bit of Taylor talk that I have for this week. Okay. <laughs> I love Taylor talk and I love that you guys love Taylor talk as well. This is really nice. Um, my thought for this week is I feel like I have calmed down enough with the tortured poets department. I'm not only focused on like the upbeat, really exciting songs. I remember when I did my ranking, I had kind of the slower songs more towards the bottom and my thought was just like, I really can't get into these yet. I'm not ready to like fully embrace the slower, sadder songs yet. And where I'm at right now is I have started to embrace those a little bit more, especially LOML and um, So Long London. I have really been getting into LOML. Um, yeah, and I really, really like them. It's, they're, they're raising on my list, on my ranking, which is good. I, I'm at that point where I can appreciate them a little bit more. I did purchase, she had the, um, acoustic version of LOML from the Eras Tour as, like, a digital album that you could purchase, and so I did purchase it because I really wanted that acoustic Eras Tour version, and I've been listening to it a lot. <laughs> it's just so good. Um, and yeah, I really like that she's, she's going through all of the Tortured Poets Department songs as surprise songs um, on the tour. She's going through them really fast, which like some people online are like, why is she going through them so fast? Does this mean something else is coming soon? And, like, maybe, but also it's her newest album. Like, why wouldn't she be wanting to sing all of those songs as much as she could, right? So, yeah, so fun. So fun. <laughs> all right, I think that's it. I think that's all the Taylor Talk thoughts that I had. I just wanted to get that out there. Um, yeah, that's it for the podcast today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Oh, mm -hmm.